Welcome to our third 2023 NBA draft breakdown of the international prospects in this draft. It is also our third breakdown of a French prospect. After profiling Victor Wembanyama and Ryan Rupert, we turn our attention to Bilal Koulibaly. He's not just Victor Wembanyama's t- teammate. He's actually one of the fastest rising prospects in the draft. For our analysis, we welcome back Jordan Watson, a 15-year overseas pro, to help us break down Koulibaly. So, Jordan, what do you see that you like out of Koulibaly that uh, kind of meshes with the fact that he's one of the top rising prospects in this draft and not just Victor's teammate? Um, I think with the the way the game is going, um, with it being more positionless basketball, you need guys who can defend multiple positions and uh, be long and athletic and run the lane, you know. Um, and I think that's kind of right exactly where he is. Um, yeah, he's got really, really long arms. Um, he's off the ball. Um, he's not necessarily like a playmaker with the ball, but he I've seen him make some good decisions and good reads. I love how he cuts and reads the game. Um, so if you put him with like a lead guard or other guys who are playmakers, he can actually be a slashing playmaker, you know, someone who is not just like a three and D guy, but he's cutting, he can read the game well also. And that's actually to your point. He's one of the younger players in the draft class at the age of 18. Uh, a lot of people are saying he has two, tremendous two-way upside right now. Uh, I think about a month ago, they were saying he's six foot six, but uh, with the combine uh, and the, the measurables coming back in, apparently he's six foot eight and has a seven foot three wingspan. Uh, so his physical comps right now compare favorably to Mikhail Bridges, Otto Porter, and Andrew Wiggins. Uh, is there any... Any truth to maybe that that's the physical comps, but do you think that that's a, a good comp for who he is as well? As far as, a yeah, okay. So, like, okay, you look at the body type, you know, and that's comparable to Mikhail Bridges, Andrew Wiggins, you know. Um, I still, I think, I think they shoot the ball better out of Porter. Uh, you know, they, they shoot the ball better right now. He's got a kind of got a slower release. Um, the technique, technique's not terrible. So, I think it'll improve as he keeps getting older. Um, but again, the the thing that really stood out to me, okay, besides his athleticism, is like, man, he 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 has a good feel for the game from what I saw. You know, like he'll be in the corner a lot. Somebody's driving the middle and he's cutting for a dunk instead of just waiting on the ball in the corner. Now that could be because maybe he's not, you know, like the best shooter right now, but still to have that feel and understand when to cut, timing for things. Um, that's big at a young age, you know, because that that either he's been coached very well or he just gets it. Either way, it's a good thing. So we actually kind of hit on some of the strengths in terms of these tall, he's got a, a large wingspan, good defender. Obviously, like you said, he's either well coached or he's got a really good understanding already at 8G team. Here's the tough part with a lot of these uh, <clears throat> prospects where they're highly rated in the first round. You got to be the downside one. What do you see as his weaknesses right now? I think you alluded to the fact that his shot's a little bit slow, but what else do you see that um, are are some of the knocks on him, at least as of right now, and how he can improve if it's fixable? Yeah, I mean, okay, the shot was kind of slow. It's not the most consistent thing. Um, and he he's not having the ball so much when he was playing with the men's team. Now, when he's playing with the younger guys team, man, he's having the ball and he's slashing, he's trading, doing a lot of Euro steps and finishing around the rim. So that's a good thing to see, you know, because when he's playing with people his age and his peers, he he shows that he can do more, you know. So obviously as he keeps getting better and uh, he keeps getting older, the competition will slow down for him and then maybe he can expand to that. Because even even if you look at Mikael Bridges, when he was playing with Phoenix, he didn't have the ball so much, you know. He wasn't this guy that we saw in Brooklyn. He went to surprise everybody, but at the same time, you you don't just surprise people overnight. Like you either have that or you don't. And it's just about being in a position and a chance to to show what you can do. So we're asking you to look ahead a little bit, but uh, projecting off of some of the mocks, there have been a range of places where he's been earlier on. He was further down in the draft class. So he's always been a draft um, consideration for the mocks. But uh, as far as the mocks go, the collection of the, some of the latest ones are the highest one is the Jazz at nine. Uh, Oklahoma City, no surprise here. Pretty much any young prospect, they're they're going to be in on him. Uh, saw Brooklyn mentioned at 21 not too long ago, but since uh, ESPN has moved him up to 14 to the New Orleans Pelicans. And somehow if he winds up getting down to Memphis Grizzlies at 25, but those are the ones are the range 
of teams that he's been projected to go to. So of those teams, which ones do you like as best fits? Um, well, obviously, I think OKC does a great job with the younger players, you know, that think they understand they have to build through the draft and trades. And they're prepared to do that, you know, drafting a lot of guys. They always seem like they have a lot of draft picks anyway. So I think that would be a good spot for them just because they're, they're prepared to build their team. So that means the player development should be good. The coaching should be good. Um, the Grizzlies could be cool also, you know. Um, it seems like they might have some openings there with the wing, uh, with Dylan Brooks leaving. And provided uh, he even makes it that far down, but yeah. Yeah, exactly, you know, so – for me, it's just about you want to see, see guys go places where they can grow and get better. You know, you don't want to. It's a gift and a curse going to a good team with vets because sometimes these vets are going to take games off and then you might get thrown in the fire, get some get some uh, some playing time experience that way. And then if you're with a younger team where they know the team is younger, you'd hope that the player development and the coaching is there to build for the future. So it, it's really all about just getting in a, a good position. Hello and thanks for watching. Be sure to give the video a like and you can watch more videos over here. Uh, you can also click subscribe over here so you're notified when we have new content here on Expat Hoops.